Catherine Fletcher, Conservative MP, elected in 2019. You have a pretty unique story about how you got into politics, how you became an MP. So, in fact, put it in your own words. Well, hi, Gloria. Thanks for having us. Um, so, basically, I think quite a lot of people, I don't come from any variety of political background, like at all. You know, it was always drilled into me how important it is to vote. You know, uh, you know parents went down, you know, it's vital that you vote. Even if you go and spoil your ballot paper as a kid, if you don't know what you're doing, you must go and vote. But outside of that, there was no tribalism in the house at all. In fact, to be fair to them, I didn't actually find out how my parents voted till after I'd kind of really got active in politics. But... If you're sat on a sofa kind of shouting at it, there has to become a point where you go, sod it, let me see if I've got something to contribute. That, and that's effectively what I did. I was living up north, but working down south and coming back and forth. And the gap doing that from like the late, late like 1997, I finished uni and coming through to like the early noughties, the gap was just widening and widening and widening, you know, Budley is out of the concrete. And I thought I've had enough of this. So I got all the manifestos and I picked the one that I disagreed with the least. <laughs> and anybody, you know this, anybody that tells you in our system that everybody believes every word of every manifesto, you know, it's for the birds, you don't, but you go, right, what's the general direction of travel? And then I went home and announced to my parents that I was gonna try and be a Tory MP. And then my dad nearly had a heart attack. Because um, <laughs> it transpires, he's he's a old, an old Labour man. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but, you know, it's been, an interesting journey, and I think Dad's just about forgiven us. <laughs> Have you always voted Conservative? I, no, I don't think so. I've definitely gone and sport my ballot paper before now, because I think it's important that you register that as a protest. You know, in my right on youth days, I thought that was a very clever thing to do. Were but you people, a right on youth? But, Were you right on? No, I'm a nerd. <laughs> I no, I'm from, I'm, I'm from South Manchester, um, so uh, I, 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 and I went to... I went to Nottingham, I went to, and because and, it felt exotically far away from Manchester when I was 18. But uh, there I met a lot of people from very different backgrounds, up posh I would call them. And uh, there's just a good few of them I'm still in touch with. <laughs> One of my mates who, whose nickname's Cliff, he went, why is it that every single person from Manchester thinks it's the centre of the universe? I was like, it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you know, and so there's been a little bit of that. But no, I've always been the one that was kind of w taking a fossil hammer around Egypt and, you know, kind of wanging on about how interesting the carbon cycle is if you really look at it in relation to the Pennines. <laughs> OK. Yeah, there's a, there's a reason why I'm single. <laughs> It must be hard to date in politics. Oh, it's impossible. It's totally impossible. You know this. You know the, like, the scrutiny that you're under. It's interesting, actually. It, South Ripple is, is my constituency, yeah. and I've had to rename it because all the Southerners kind of get this wide-eyed, glassy panic because they don't know where it is. So I've renamed it, you know, the bit under Preston. And, <laughs> Very um, good. Exactly. And when I'm home, and I remember going and seeing a load of the school teachers, and there was this one lass who you know, quite rightly got into me about government education policy. I don't think she was necessarily a conservative voter, but we had a chat. We agreed that standards was really important, got into it a bit more. And the next time I saw her, she said, um, God, I've just realized something. She said, you can never go out in the constituency, can you? And I said, no, I said, mate, I can have a pint, but alcohol and politics and what people think of you, you know, obviously I must be like dead posh, wear pearls, ride horses, beat the servants of a nightly basis. You know, none of it's true, but that plus alcohol is toxic. And she'd come across it because she'd ended up having to leave a, uh, leave a, a local kind of social club because the parents of some of the children that she taught were there. Yeah. And I said, yeah, but times that by like 100,000 people. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, no, I've got there. <laughs> so no. Yeah, I actually, it's a good point. I found myself getting my friends round to my house a lot more first to socialise because you can't... You just can't go out, you know, because some, somebody, somebody has got, well, just try and land one on you. you know, yeah. It was more, I thought, God, I can't really have too many drinks. And I quite like having too many drinks. <laughs> Especially <laughs> subject. So, so I drink lager. Right. But I don't particularly like wine or cocktails or any. I like the odd gin and tonic, but I drink lager. But in part because it's not physically possible to drink the volume that gets you in a pickle. <laughs> yeah. It's a strategy I adopted at university and I've never come off it. Maybe I was a proto ladette. <laughs> what, well, you, what, you did serve as a minister for women. Yes. Did you like that job? 
Uh, well, it, it, it was it was quite brief. <laughs> yeah, it was you know, brief. I'm not going to lay. So I'm not going to lay claim to kind of oceans of ministerial expertise, but uh, actually within it, I think there's something really important, which is we women's rights have really been fought for. You know, like you go around and you talk to young people and you go, just so you know, right? And up until not that long ago, like when my grandma was alive. Women weren't allowed in this place. You couldn't have this job. You couldn't vote, you know, and you tell them about, um, I don't know, you've been in the Prime Minister's study in the House of Commons. Well, I haven't because I was a Labour MP. We used to have well, those in the like, olden days. Now I feel like a complete <laughs> git for kind of going, well, of course, you know, well, I'm very important. I'm not doing that. Right. No, you I go know. in the Prime Minister's study in the House of Commons. And it's like, it's a funny shape and there's this wall with like a cutout in it, you know, like the, um, like the secret toilets in, the, in, the, in, the, in that pub in Edinburgh, you know, and you go through the bookcase. Anyway, <laughs> you go through this kind of secret door and there's this very 1980s kind of little loo and hand basin thing. And it was installed for Margaret Thatcher because otherwise she would have been having to leg it across the whole of the house because there's no women's loos. It's almost like that hidden figures thing, you know, where the woman's running across the car park to go for a win, run back again. And so, actually, I do think that these rights, that's within our lifetimes that, that she's done that. And I think reminding people of it, but also saying that that job's not quite finished yet, I, th I think it's important. It doesn't necessarily, you know, my pal and namesake, Nick Fletcher, who's the Dong Valley MP, he gets in, he was getting into me saying we should have a minister for men as well. I said, well, two Fletchers, you do men and I do women. And I think there is something about the fact that you, you don't, nobody gets anywhere by bashing one down. You know, there's some historic wrongs to right, but there are some things in terms of men that really do need to focus on them. Um, you know, uh, mental health, suicide, you know, male role models. So I, personally, I'd have both or have it explicit within a, have a men's health explicit somewhere within a, a ministerial portfolio. That's but, interesting. But that, that's maybe because of just, you know, Nick wants to be minister for men. <laughs> Fletcher's... <laughs> the, the so Fletch. you're his manager. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, you raise a good point. Do you think that might... Could be on the cards? No idea. It's no, well above yeah. my pay grade. <laughs> and so you made, you made the point that your grandparents couldn't have been in mm -hmm. the, the House of Commons. Well, the, for lots of reasons, including the, back, the fact that they were, my grandma was in a back-to-back -back Salford slum. You know, it's not just gender that's transformed. It's, uh, it's kind of, you know, opportunities, you know, stay educated from within shore. You know, the system has got me, allowed me to get to this point. I have worked hard for it as well, but that is a long, long, long change. We're like for somebody like my accent to walk in. I think, uh, I think the Conservative 2019 intake, I think it's the first, gen first MP intake that's taken a pay rise to come in. But, and that, you know, and, and I remember when we first pitched up, there was a, you could see there was a few people on all sides going, what, hello, what's this lot up to? Um, and, but I, I would argue very strongly we're making it better. Part of the reason I wanted to get into politics was I, mates, my mates say, why are you doing it? I said, I want to stand in the corridors of power with my arms folded saying, are you serious? <laughs> and I think being able to do that, it, that's my granulation of bringing different life experiences. You know, I'm a, I've got a science degree. I was running my own business. I'm state educated. And from that bit in you know, Game of Thrones, where it's the other side of the wall, you know, where there's snow and wolves, otherwise known as the north of England, you know. These are important perspectives that we don't have enough of down here. I'm not saying I'm a woman on my own with that, but it no. is my mission. And you said there, um, you wanted to stand there sometimes and say, are you, ser are you serious? Are you serious? How often, or has there been an occasion where something's happened in Parliament where you felt the need to... Yeah, I do it quite a bit, but I'm not going to tell you. And going back to being one of the women in Parliament. Have you, and been a scientist too, and been in business, ha have you encountered sexism along that journey, including where you are now? Mm. When I first started in local politics, yes. I think, that, I think there's quite a lot of it. I think, big shout out to anyone that's a female councillor. I think it's more prevalent at that level. Um, uh, you know, that, you know, I'm still encountering misogyny, but from that tier below. Here, genuinely haven't had a bar of it. 
in fact, to the point I've, I've felt nothing but welcomed and supported, you know, uh, and actually, you know, and supported not in a, oh, here, let me boost you up, as in, I am going to turn around to you and give you the same mouthful I would give a lad because I view you as completely equal. You know, you know, you, does that make sense? Yeah. Some of the banter is quite good value. <laughs> Probably not principal for this audience. <laughs> so. Um, so you want to, do you want more, no, you want more northerners in? You want more state educated people uh, in I, parliament? Well, you want I, more women in? You want do you pe more people in? Like, no. Right. How, how do we do it? Um, well, first of all, people like me coming out of their natural environments, which is kind of fields and fossil hammers, to look at you in a lovely frock and these lights and that camera crew and, and sit here and go, I've done it. I, was, I didn't join a political party till it was either 2012 or 2013, I can't remember, you know. And, and then by putting my head down, doing a load of hard work, saying this is what I have to offer, I think a lot of, a lot of people, not just women, but also people from maybe non-conventional backgrounds, they just self-edit themselves out of it because they think they're not gonna get anywhere. And if I'm absolutely honest, I didn't think I was gonna get anywhere. I, but I just got a bit bloody minded about it, as in, well, I, I'm gonna try and fail. And I remember my mates sitting me down and saying, well, it's generational, this really, Catherine, isn't it? You know, you're gonna fail, but then you'll be able to pass how you failed on to the next generation. But you didn't, and, you no, succeeded. But, but, but if I can do it, listen to me, you know, look at me. I'm, you know, if I can do it, you can do it, ladies and gentlemen crack on and give us, drop us an email and I'll help you. And I think that's the other thing that doesn't necessarily come across, and I know it's true for different parties, there are big networks saying, come, this will help you, we'll train you. I mean, some of the stuff I did when I first pitched up, you know, oh God, it was awful. I was genuinely just, you know, I was making a right horlicks of it, but you get certain people that come, my dear, just quote word. Um, because there is a game to it, but it's not so obnoxious that you can't learn it. You know, don't say that. Be nice to that person. Uh, you know, the, 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 you know, it's all right. It's all right. Um, if we, we've, I can't believe it, but we've, it, you're very engaging uh, to listen to. So we're nearly out of time. Oh. We have, we have um, another thing in common. Go on. We both vape. Ah. But everyone's having a go at us for doing it. I feel like... It's great that we managed to stop smoking cigarettes. I wish people would give us less of a hard time for vaping. What do you reckon? So, so, so I, 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 there was I, the I shall edit the names, but you, you, as you know, there are little lady members' rooms in the House of Commons. Those are like yeah. toilets. Yeah, so, yeah they're yeah, basically just... like toilets with an anti and 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 and, and uh, you know the legend that is Margaret Beckett was in there with two Labour MPs and two Conservative MPs, and um, and I had to kind of waft my my. Th she, you could see her going. It's like a sign of a well-spent youth, <laughs> you know, and it wasn't actually because yeah. smoking is a really stupid thing to do Absolutely. and I wish I hadn't started. I totally agree. But I tried every which way to give up. Absolutely. And the only way I managed to give up was on a vape. Now, um, at the risk of sounding like Don Corleone when they're doing that big sit down, you know, I don't want it sold to kids and yeah. I don't want yeah. it sold at the school gate. Yeah. But, but I think it's perfectly possible to regulate it such that Absolutely. you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater on harms. Um, so I actually looked into this because a lot of my mates are still really worried that I'm still vaping. Um, so it's a, a double blind scientific article, but I will be quick, I promise. No, this is quite helpful um, for me. Uh, <laughs> epithelial cells, lung cells in a yeah. petri dish, uh, blowing cigarette smoke over one of them, blowing right. vape over another and fresh air over another. Good double blind control. They cut, the, the epithelial cells are like shriveling up and dying at like the 5,000 horrible yeah. components that are in the smoke. Yeah can't tell the difference between vape and fresh air. Wow. Now, is it, is it better than fresh air? No. Is it 90, am I killing myself 95% more slowly? Yes. And so provided we can educate the kids, I personally think that it's an important tool there, but, that, but, I don't, but they needs to be slightly better regulated. Yes. So these disposable ones that are getting sold out the back of hairdressers in South Ribble, you know, God knows what they've got in them. We can't yeah. have that. And so yeah. they're right about that. Um, what, um, what a great interview. You, honestly, really, really refreshing. I love your accent. I love your style. And I've really enjoyed our chat. Thank you. Thanks for having us. I'll come back <laughs> and then we can, we can do paleontology next. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine Fletcher. Cheers. <laughs>